the Lord. Yesterday evening we, we tried ending on the note of people understanding and knowing how to engage the allocation of grace that God has given to them. Maybe I should say it this way. The Bible, should I, should I? So that we don't take all the time. Just pay attention. But I wanted to take us to the Gospel of Luke chapter 1. And, and the, Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 has, I think, it has up to 80 verses. It's a very long verse of the Bible. And there are some things that the Bible mentioned of importance that I wish we can look at. It's going to apply to what I would have wanted to say. For instance, the Bible started talking about tokens. Tokens. The Bible talked about tokens. The Bible talked about covenants. The Bible talked about um, um, tokens, covenants, and promises. Right? You see, in the creation of the world, there are allocation of graces to civilizations, to cities, to people. Every person is not the same. Every land is not the same. Every people group are not the same. Right? Of course, you know that there are places you go to in Nigeria. You are going to find some kind of resources that you don't find in other kind of places. If you go to the south-south part of Nigeria, you are likely going to find oil. The, that oil in that land is not because the land prayed. It was not because the land fasted. It's an allocation of grace that God has given that land by God's um, premonition, by his sovereignty. It was not their intercession or the intercession of the soil there that brought about the oil in that land. It was God's allocation. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you travel up north, maybe somewhere in the Middle Belt area, in places like Jaws, in places like um, Kogi State, and in some parts of Abuja, you are going to see that people are also into mining. There are natural resources, but nat natural resource is not crude oil. They can be getting precious stones and all kinds of stones there. In the southeast part of Nigeria, if you travel um, to places like a Boeing State, you are going to see in commercial quantities where people are mining lead, lead, L-E-A-D, or what we call brass, lead, lead that you find in pencils they use in making all these makeups that um, sisters wear. <laughs> it's lead. Most of those things are lead are made from lead or products of lead right you are also going to see that um, they have a kind of water there that if you boil it to a point you can get salt out of it they have what we call the hard water these things are not in land or in places because the land is an intercessor it is God out of his um, wisdom that factors in these possibilities in those lands it is not anybody's doing so even in natural creation, there are graces, there are abilities that places are given that other places were not given. There are crops you can grow in just that you don't dare grow in Oka. Is that true? Yes. What is the difference? Is it because Oka people are not praying? It's not true. The land has an allocation of grace um, to eat that is different from the allocation of grace you find in several other places. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. If, if you understand this, you are also going to um, understand that people groups have allocation of graces. People groups. Just um, taking Nigeria for example, the Igbo people are not the Hausa people in any way. Even if they stay together for the next hundred years, they will not be the same. People groups have allocation of graces. There are things that the house man can do with ease that the Igbo man cannot do with ease. There are things that the Igbo man can do with ease that the house man, no matter the academic qualification, will not be able to do with ease. Even if two of them are not praying, it's just an allocation of grace that comes to people group. I wanted to show you this in the book of Luke chapter 1 where the Bible was talking about the covenants that God made to our fathers, the promises that he made, and the tokens that he gave. So cities have tokens. Cities have covenants. Cities have promises. The land, the people, 
and from nation to nation you are going to find out that people are not the same everywhere right so um the Igbo man for instance which we are uh, we didn't have to go to harvard to study business there was no need for many years there was no business school in onija and even if there was one which there is one currently if we have 100 businessmen in onija is 0.5 percent of the 100 that became wealthy because they went to business school so how did they learn the art of business is an investment that god has put in the people they do it with ease not even knowing they are doing anything so that you can see that this is a grace that god has given to a people if you move them from here to to zaria and keep them in zaria they will do the same thing in zaria irrespective of it's not about what we have or what we don't have it's just the people grace at work in a people group if you move people that are farmers to a place where there are no farms they will go there and create farms there the people of israel was taken to a, a desert land when they gathered back you know after the whole fight they gathered back um, to their land they became agriculturists very powerful ones most of the apples we eat in fact all over the world is coming from desert lands in israel they have capacity to convert the environment to something wonderful it's just the people in the tech world for instance in the academic world the people that have more inclination to tech are which people who knows eh? the indians the indians there is nothing tech you won't find an indian man almost at the head almost at the head from google to twitter to facebook to instagram to any tech at all they are there and they are doing exceptionally well so this is just something that come to them for instance the only sports they play in india largely is cricket cricket you don't find india in world cup <laughs> You know, they told stories of how they came for World Cup many years ago, played against, is in Nigeria, and they used charm to play. If they play the boy, it will turn to the head of, um, so I don't know, you know, fairy tales. <laughs> These things are folklore. As a matter of fact, the Indian nation um, started playing cricket for one major reason. You can verify what I'm telling you. They were supposed to be colonized by a particular i think it was um the americans or who that colonized india i can't remember if it was britain i don't know which nation colonized india eh? britain and part of the requirements um part of the conditions they gave them for colonization is that they will be able to defeat them in the sports it's a verified information you can check online and the sports britain choose was cricket hoping that the indians will find it difficult to win for many years indians never won for many 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 years they will select people groups they will train for one year and then britain just brings a team they will win india so with that everybody in india started learning how to play cricket because they want to be free till today they can't play any other game apart from has anybody checked online i you know i believe in an intelligent church <laughs> See, today, the only game they play is cricket. They needed it as a condition for freedom, for independence. So, no matter how much you shout about football, it's not their business. The same Britain colonized us. Why did they get to their turn and they brought out that kind of condition? There is something God has put in the people. Praise the Lord. Is it making sense what I'm sharing with us? Yes black people are not white people in all ramification praise the lord so these graces vary from land to people and when we come to the house of god you need to understand this we are not all the same if these things i have said are true what makes you think that is the same grace the same quality and quantity of grace that is at work on everybody seated here it cannot be the same everybody has a unique line of grace 
that God has invested in him. In fact, most of the times, you might have started experiencing that grace before you got born again. You will see the, the, the workings of that grace. Some people have started having prophetic dreams before they got born again. And if, they are, if darkness finds them early, they bring them into the witchcraft world as seers. They have that natural propensity. Don't you watch movies where they are saying there's a particular person they are looking for that, is a, that should carry a particular whatever, maybe because of the special ability the person has. This is how God has created people. And if you don't find your unique line of grace, you will struggle. There is no apologies. You will just be struggling and struggling and struggling as though God is never faithful in your case. Part of how God helps us is that he helps us find our unique line of grace. Yes. And I want to encourage you, married people hoping to get into marriage, even from your children, you can look at them from two, from three, and see the unique line of grace at work in their life. They didn't learn it. It was inbuilt. They came like this. They operate like that freely, with ease. Some people know how to cry. They just love crying. Some don't. <laughs> Is that true? The ones that know how to cry, if we bring them to church, we put them in the in intercessory department. <laughs> Let this go there and cry. <laughs> cry to, if you put them in the choir, they will just be crying with the microphone. So they should be in the in, in the intercessory department where there are cries. God will hear their cry. So there are you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is just to further reinforce what I'm saying. There are unique line of graces for everybody seated in this place. All of us. Part of what you call purpose discovery is the discovery of that grace. And much more the application of that grace. There are abilities you have. Maybe you don't even know you have it yet. But in line with purpose discovery is the discovery of that grace and then the application. Where can this grace be used? The white people have taught us that every possibility you see people exhibit can be applied. And it can be applied very well in different places. People that know how to jump should go into long jump. People that like jumping high should go and do high jump. People that love chasing one team around in the building should go and play football. It's natural with them. You will take them to school, they will fail mathematics, fail chemistry, fail physics, and look like they are cursed. <laughs> but what is just lacking is that you've not, they've not found the environment of their grace. Praise the Lord. Everybody has an environment of grace. But you need to find out the grace. Okay, let me just share this and then um, I will just say a few other things and we'll close. The grace in your life, for instance, right, can, can become better. I don't know how to explain this. The grace in your life can grow. Let me, explain, let me put it that way. That's not exactly what it is, but that's what I'm trying to say. It can grow. It can, it can find better expression. Right? Every grace you have now, if it is um, a natural ability, for instance, if you force me to go and play basketball and say because I'm six feet four or six feet three, I should be good for basketball, that's not what it means for me. Right? I've even tried going to play basketball. And it's not my interest. Early this year, I started going to um, the Kweme Square where they play basketball. So I got there one evening. I've been, I've been going there. I just want to pray and cool off my head and I go there to sit. So one of those evenings, I went there. I sat down. I was watching the guys do what they do. So they did it first day, second day, third day. I called one of the guys that plays for Anambra State basketball team. He said he's the captain. I told him, bro, this thing one that they do now, can I learn it? He said, yes, it's very easy. 
Papa, it's very, very easy. Just buy a ball. Can we bounce in the ball? He said, let me have your ball. Give me the ball. I tried to bounce it. It wasn't making any sense. Is this what? How long? How many years? <laughs> Will I bounce this ball now? For him, it's not a problem. Just give me the ball first. He thinks it's easy because he has an enabling in that area. After I went there a few times, they advised me to buy a ball, buy a boot, buy... I just left them. I know they are not serious. <laughs> okay, I know they are serious, but... <laughs> this is not me. If you force me in, I won't fit in. If you see me in a basketball field, you will wonder why did they bring this zombie here. Does that mean I can't do any other thing? Hello? <laughs> That's just the thing. That's what I'm trying to explain. Hope you're getting it now. But that grace can find better expression. There are simply four ways of making a grace find better expression. It's not many. Basically four. Basically. You can, you can, um, and when I mean basically, I mean that's not all. But this is basic. Right? I think in the book of Philemon, can you give me Philemon? Philemon chapter 1 from verse 6. Let me show you this. Is it 6 or 16? Philemon 1 and verse 6. Look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. That's, that's the scripture I'm looking for. It says that the communication of thy faith might become effectual. It means the communication of your faith might not be effectual. It's possible for it not to be effective. How does it start becoming effectual? It says by the acknowledging of every good thing there are people that cannot sit down look at their life and acknowledge the good things they already have the good abilities it starts becoming effectual after you start acknowledging this is how it begins those things you can do with is acknowledge it first you acknowledge it you look at it and say yes this is this is happening this is working for me this is easy to do I have unusual ability to do this have you not found children that became genius in mathematics at age 16 you think it's because they learned multiplication table did they multiplication table have you met people that are good with numbers if you say 1000 times or 1965 times 37.60 they will tell you the answer who can do it here? <laughs> Even your calculator is slow. <laughs> For those people, they are faster. You think that thing is because they went to school? No, it's an ability that God has given them. That the communication of your faith might become how? Effectual. It becomes more effective, becomes more potent, more powerful when you begin to acknowledge it. God has helped me. I think I can do this thing easily. I understand easily. When I read, it enters. There are some of you from Nazare 1 till date. <laughs> till date. You have graduated from the university. Good. But still, you can't remember one thing taught in your final year. One. Not two. One. Even the course. The course title. Or the project topic i can't remember <laughs> some people even graduated last year but still i'm not talking about people that graduated many years ago but they have graduated or they've passed right while they were there they knew they managed to pass it was in 300 level we came to lab and they brought fecal samples and urine and <laughs> I looked at the whole thing. So it's somebody's poo poo that you people brought here. Somebody's blood. You people so what are we going to do? You, me, we should be playing with these things. For the first time I stood there and I looked, I said, how did I get here? What on earth brought me to this place? Fecal samples. But some people are doing it with joy. And then they're in the microscope. Wow! We have seen gram-positive organisms. <laughs> 
We are seeing the rods, the cocci. You know the funny, funny things they tell us in, in biology class. They are seeing it. I never saw anything. Never. <laughs> never. I never. I only see it when they draw it in a textbook, online. But people are seeing it with the microscope. Dear, I've never seen it. The more you are explaining, the more confusion I have. Does that mean I'm useless? No. No. The day you find the grace of God, it will carry you. That's what it does. It's like a river. If you find your unique path, something you don't understand will just be carrying you. People will stop you and say, how, how you they do what you they do? There is, you don't have an explanation. You can tell them uh, we are fasting, no, but we are praying, no, but uh, leave all those things. If it's not your own, it's not your own. So the first thing is what? Acknowledging. When you go back today, find out things you need to acknowledge. An ability you have, some of them you did not learn it. I've seen children at five years, six years, losing things in their house to try to fix it. In, a, in my entire life, I've never attempted using a screwdriver. To, you have to force me to do it so that I will do it. I've never attempted it. I'm not, I'm not so creative that something gets spoiled. I don't know if you have those kind of people. If the remote stops working, they, I don't change bulb. Not like I can't change it, but if it's only me that's in the house, the bulb can die and remain like that. But some people, as soon as it's dying, they will repair the bulb. <laughs> they will tell you if you give me this thing I will even fix the bulb you don't have to buy a new one hello acknowledge do what acknowledge if you pay attention you will find something to acknowledge yes you might not know the application you might not, how, you might not know how to put it to the market use where you can be paid for it but you will find something first of all to acknowledge that's where it begins. Acknowledge it first. Acknowledge things. If not, the communication of your faith might not be effectual. It must not be. But it can become by the acknowledging of every good thing. Somebody say every good thing. Yes. That is in you. In Christ Jesus. Number two. <sighs> when you do this right it's expected please pay attention it's expected that you grow in knowledge in the line of grace grow in knowledge in the line of that grace now that you are good with losing things in the house don't go to the university and say you are studying medicine and surgery. It's not human heart you are losing. You will forget, you will even use panna to tight people. <laughs> Grow in knowledge in the line of that grace. This is why even we as adults need to help our children find these things early so that we we'll fix them in the right department. I have a cousin that just woke up and said he wants to study theater and theater arts. Theater art. You know our pain, our real pain, <laughs> was our paid school fees for him. A marriage, a marriage, I don't know how many people know marriage comprehensive, marriage brothers. So, and I think it was um, the Eva Valley one in Enugu that he schooled in. And his school fees was nearly 300 and something K. Secondary school. So when he finished secondary school, he now came and said he wants to study theater arts. We were offended. We were, we were heartbroken <laughs> because they were preparing him to be a doctor. <laughs> so the mother called me one day. We had to calculate from because I knew him from nursery to primary. He was in Saint Anne's Catholic School in, in, in Kaduna when they were small. I knew how much they were paying heavily. Did primary did secondary and all just to study 
theater arts. Everybody was angry. Is theater arts bad? Eh? It's just that this guy would have just told us earlier. We can put him anywhere when he crashes. <laughs> Why are we hiring lesson teacher to teach you physics? Only for you to come and study theater arts. At the end of the day, I told the mother, allow him to study theater arts. So he shuts the door behind us and he's dancing inside the room. His, his mumu is, is, you know, some people's mumu, they, don't, they didn't learn it. Have you seen Mr. Ebo before? Even if he's in church and he's serious. <laughs> if you put him in the cell, prisoners, will, they'll be wondering. <laughs> it's just like that. What if you make him a medical doctor? <laughs> Pregnant women will just come and be wondering, <laughs> are we supposed to be a neighbor? <laughs> I hope you are getting what I'm saying. You grow in knowledge in the line of grace. It increases. Right? I think it's First Peter. I can't remember. Um, you can find it for me. That grace and peace be multiplied unto you. According to the knowledge. Find that. Is that First Peter or Second Peter too? Grace and peace be what? Multiplied unto you. Can you find it? So, grace can, the intensity can increase. It's simple. How? Grow in the knowledge of that grace. Increase in knowledge. Learn from people that are already there. That line of grace has people that are already operating it. Learn from them. You can't find, you can't find the scripture. Second Peter 3. Growing grace. Okay, you will find it in Second Peter a lot. With any other one. Okay, let's have both. Let's have one, two, and then three eighteen. Second Peter 1 from verse 2. But grow in grace and in the knowledge. Right? Okay, take me to Second Peter 1, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied. This is, this is actually what I'm looking for. Be multiplied unto you. How? How does it multiply and increase? No. 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 This is simple. It's not very complicated. Grow in the knowledge. Grow in the knowledge. Grow in the knowledge. Learn and learn and learn and learn and learn don't stop learning I don't know how many of you have tried reading a history book before history textbook and they are saying what you don't understand um, at some point in my life I was introduced to novels novels very nice books Francis Rivers especially so I tried reading the first of all the book is discouraging I see it and I'm discouraged why on earth will somebody write story 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 that is not true I write 400 pages of a story that is not true and then the, the book is like this it's brown with tiny writing so they gave me the thing the, somebody sits down and reads it in two days or three days with joy I've bought different types. I tried reading it. It's not working. What did I do? I just kept the novel and looked for Dr. Munro. I understand Dr. Miles Munro. Understanding your potential. Releasing your potential. <laughs> I, I, maximizing your, I, I, There is something I understand. This guy is saying, he's speaking my language. Francis Rivers never spoke my language once. I don't understand what he's saying. I know many people went through secondary school reading James Hadley Chase and all those things. I didn't read one. I don't think I know anything inside one. It's not my thing. I read, but not that kind of thing. So somehow, what was in me was already dragging me to the direction of knowledge. Already. 
already. But I, it was in hundred level they started. I don't know who studied plant biology or animal biology or whatever. They were talking about zoo mastigophora, phyto, phyto mastigophora, and there are many funny things. You know the taxonomy of plant biology and all that. And I'm wondering, so that what will happen when we know all these things now? What <laughs> will happen? <laughs> But some people, they're enjoying it. I never enjoyed it. If I had my way, I would have called my father and said, I'm in the wrong department. The good thing that happened was that I still went through school and found myself. I still developed myself in the area that God has called me, in the area of grace I have. If not, I would have graduated like every other person. I would say Nigeria cannot employ anybody. I would be part of those women. I know a lot about pharmacy. A lot. I only did one pharmaceutical course in the university. One. One. Pharmaceutical, but um, um, I've forgotten the course code, but it's 383 in 300 level, second semester. One. Only. But as soon as they started the class, I knew. This lecturer will never cover my scope. My scope is wider than what this guy has. So let me go and find everything I need to know. And I started learning them. That training was self-training. Self-training. Out of over 80 courses we did, one. And then when it was time to do project, I picked a project in that course. That was where I did my project. I came out from school and continued my, my learning because I found something that resonates with me. Does it make sense? Because I like this thing. I love this area. There is nobody without grace. Usually why you look stunted is because you don't grow in grace by knowledge. You don't grow. The more you learn about a grace, the more you understand the applicabilities. Where does it fit in? How does it work? Where can I use it? Keep learning, you will find. Right? One day you will find somebody that is looking for what you are looking for. That has some kind of knowledge that you don't already have. You borrow from that one. If the two of you continue, you find another person. That's what it means to have one, one like-minded. That's what like-mindedness like means. Not everybody is like-minded. You can have two people that dress the same way but very different in their mind. They can be friends. It's not how they dress that makes them like-minded. It's how, it's how their mind is similar. I've told you the story of my friend that brings his trouser here. He was in Oka last week. We went somewhere together. He brings his trouser here and carries... And he's a pharmacist. He was in pharmacy department. No wonder he can be my friend in the first place. But he's very boring. Very boring. But that like, we, we know where we are meeting. I and him cannot go out because we don't look like he's already in suits, bogus suits, bogus trousers, bogus shoes, with a Jehovah Witness leather bag and, and then his phone. It's the only umbrella he doesn't go with. That's what it means to be like-minded. You can find people you are like-minded. And there are different graces. Tell somebody there are different graces. If you keep looking and observing, you will keep finding and finding and finding. If I'm to do business now, and I'm asked to choose, what business will I do? Some people naturally will want to choose Mbuka. You know Mbuka? I don't know how to motor parts. Nothing will take me there. Nothing on earth will take me. Anywhere you have to lose something, I'm not there. If you ask me to sell drugs, I will sell. If you ask me to sell phone, not to repair all. <laughs> sell, just tell them the features the phone has. It's a nice phone. Me too. If you ask me to sell cars, it's natural interest. It's not my wife that every car that has, if once your car is blue, they are the same car. <laughs> you can have a, a blue Lexus and a blue Volkswagen. According to her, 
two of them is the type of your car. <laughs> they are the same type. <laughs> you know, the cars are dependent on colors. For her, is the color. <laughs> it's the color of the car that is the car. <laughs> so if you have a black car and I have a black car, it means we have the same type of. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Imagine her selling cars. <laughs> or she say my husband is a car dealer. Therefore, therefore what? <laughs> Does he have business selling cars? <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's one of us in this place. A, a lady I saw of recent she made a post of a car. And she wrote under it, I love crazy cars. I know the car. But I'm wondering how did this sister even know this car in the first place? And she said she would like to drive it. Most ladies say just buy a car and give them his car. The spec does not matter if it's four valve, six valve, eight valve. They don't even care. But they don't know valve. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's car was doing hard started and then she said, Ah, the car is doing oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was the explanation she gave mechanic. So the mechanic said just you should just close the car and leave it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Enter into a deep realm of knowledge in that area of grace. Somebody came to Apostle's office. I was with Apostle in the office, just in the co- this conference. I went to Papa's office, and then somebody came and brought a book, a book that is bigger than a Bible. A book that is bigger than a Bible. And then he wanted Apostle to pray over the book and also have that copy. And then Apostle asked, so what's this book about? The brother says, about football. Football. <laughs> the book is as thick as this Bible. So looked at the book. He said, How many years did you, <laughs> did you write this book? How did you come up with this thing, this document? I can have a book as big as a Bible and it's about football. Are there books about football? Now you know there are books. Because you might say, In my area of grace, there is nothing to study. You are just joking. There are, you, you cannot exhaust the materials in any area. So somebody that wants to play football, why? What's this book about? I looked at the documentary by the coach of some of the best sportsmen, some of the best. Right? I think I've brought some of their materials here during workers' meeting. We discussed some things like that. And part of what basketballers were forced, what part of what he forced them to study was geometry, circle geometry. People that did mathematics will understand what I'm saying, or physics. So they need to know positioning in the pitch, in the courts, where they can shoot from. And they were studying circle geometry, part of training. And what will happen to the ball, how the breeze will blow it, how, and it's basketball. And those guys did it, and they are the best. Who are the greatest boxers you know? I mean, Mike Tyson, yes. Muhammad Ali. No, I want the older ones. Maybe that's more recent. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, and um, there's something, one guy that has field to his name. Evander Holyfield. Do you know Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, and um, what was the other person? Muhammad Ali have the same coach. It was the coach that coached the first person. He retired. He went on to the second person. Coached the second person. He became the world champion. Retired. He went to the third person. Coached the third person. He became world champion. And then the coach retired. And he coached them one person at a time. Think about it. What does that coach know? Okay, let me also ask you. Is the coach a world champion in boxing? What if they tell the coach, oh, you don't enter ring before, I better get out. 
Ekel or Lueke. Everybody should find their place of grace and stay there. You will shine. It will be beautiful. And grow in the knowledge. Number three, use. Take me to Hebrews chapter 5. I can't tell where exactly because you know I didn't plan to teach this, it just came up. So I don't have all my scriptures handy. The Bible says that um, when you ought to be teachers, you still have need to be taught what be the first mysteries of what what what, what I think is Hebrews chapter 6. And then it got to a place and started talking about people who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Find that part for me. That, that's the part I'm looking for. So if you want to grow, it's time up. Is it time? Are you giving me a sign? Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought it's time up. Let's be going. Eh? 512. Show me. Take me to 512. But okay, 514. Look at this. It says, but strong me belong to them who are full age. The word full age is the word matured. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. How you can have your senses exercised, your graces exercised, your ability exercised to be able to operate better is by reason of use. By reason of what? Use. You must use it. If you, if you believe God called you in any area or you have grace for anything, exercise it every day. Do what? Not some days. Not sometimes. If possible, round the clock. Stay on it. Stay on it. Keep engaging that ability. If you are not learning about it, you are practicing it. If you are not practicing it, you are meditating on it. If you are not meditating on it, you are asking questions. Stay around that grace by reason of use. Keep engaging, keep engaging, keep engaging, keep engaging. You keep getting better as you keep engaging one of the best kickboxers in the world. well not at professional level but he's about the best everybody knows him bruce lee bruce lee bruce lee in one of his quotes said he's not scared of a man who can practice a thousand kicks but he's scared of the man that can practice one kick a thousand He's not scared of a man who can practice a thousand kicks, but he's scared of the man who can practice one kick a thousand times. He said, that's the man you should fear. You should really fear that one. Because if that one kick gets you, he has done it one thousand times. So if he, <laughs> if he gets you by mistake, it's enough. In wrestling, we call it smackdown. They can be doing everything and until you smack. <laughs> Smackdown is the one that if it happens to you, that's all. I don't know if that is true or movie. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, we'll find out in heaven. On earth, we can still find out on earth. It's just that I'm no longer interested, right? So you must use, you must engage. Always engage. Always engage. You will never be good at anything you do to engage, irrespective of the kind of grace you have there. You won't be good. So how many things have you shared with us? Fine. Give me the scripture in the book of James. Is it James? Where the Bible says that God resists the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. He resists the proud. He, James 4, 6. Take me to James 4. He giveth more grace. There are many things you find in that one, one verse. Number one is that there is such a thing as more grace. Yes. 
it means the level you have is not the highest level. The level you have cannot be the highest level. Number two is that more grace can be given. First is that there is a level. Are you seeing how I'm interpreting the Bible? First is that the level you have is not the highest level. There is more grace. Number two is that that more grace can be what? Given. It's possible for you to receive it. Somebody can give it to you. That's what we call impartation. Impartation can heighten the layer of grace already at work. It can heighten the intensity. Let me tell you what happens. I think I should use this fan, for example. Look at this. You have the control to this fan. Go there, go there, please. In what number is it now? One. Put it on two. Put it on three. Okay, put it on five. Put it on five. Let's, let's save time. I wish we can have one blowing at one and then another one blowing at five. Okay, that one is at one. Or at two. Let's assume these two fans are the same. They have the same grace, the same size, the same company, the same engine, the same capacitors, the same blades, the same everything. Right? These two fans. Now, which one is blowing better? Which one has capacity to cool better? Both of them has. Which one is actually cooling better? What happened to this that has not happened to it? We increased the intensity of the grace already at work in this one. It's the same ability. We just increased the intensity. How that it can operate better. There's something you can do on it that it starts. The grace is on your life. There's something we can do on it. If you keep coming here to pray and we keep doing what we are doing, a day comes, there's something we can do on that, your, 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 your measure. And it can, it can operate differently. Five loaves of bread and two fish can actually feed 5,000. Yes. What fed them was not 5,000. It was five loaves of bread. What happened to the five loaves of bread? The intensity of the operation of five loaves can increase. It can actually increase. The same anointing at work in my life now can increase in intensity. The same. It doesn't have to be a new one. So when the Bible says more grace, it's talking about intensity of the operation of that grace. So first is that there is more grace. The intensity can increase. Secondly is that that intensity can be a gift. You can receive it. Number three, you are picking from this scripture. Is that what you already have can also be resisted. Something can happen to it and it dulls it. It won't operate as it should operate. And what is that thing that you can carry that dulls that grace according to the scripture? Pride. Pride. And if you want the grace to actually increase, what do you do? Be humble. Carry grace with humility. And I'm not become carry grace with what? Humility. Carry it with humility. Grace is, is, is sweet when it is carried with humility. Have you seen people carrying power with humility? Carrying experience with humility. Carrying expertise with humility. It's beautiful. There is nothing. You want to see it every day. Not somebody that doesn't know anything and cannot know anything but is proud. Or knows just small. But in shoe, in leg, no get shoes, no get size again. That's the way my mother says it. I asked her, Pats, if I had in Dubai. I don't know if you that, that many years I didn't understand what that means, but growing up, I knew what it meant. 
it means even the thing the person wants, you can't find it in Dubai. It's not in Dubai. If you go to Dubai, you won't find it. Where else? If anything you don't find in Dubai is not in existence. <laughs> Based on what you want to buy. iPhone, Samsung, whatever you don't find in Dubai, the best. It's just like saying in Nigeria that a certain part is not in Lagos. Where would you find it? Huh? Lagos. No Boko. You it's not there, it's not there. So learn to carry grace how? With humility. It's beautiful. That's the best sight you want to see. How that Jesus, the Son of God, can carry that power with simplicity. Jesus. That measure of power. That's God was compressed and put inside him and he was not shaking he's not moving around telling everybody do you know who I am carry grace there's nothing in pride so you can actually be given more grace praise the Lord I think we should stop here have we learned praise the Lord this is where I want to stop this is not what I wanted to teach but next Wednesday <laughs> Next Wednesday will continue. This is life and godliness. Were you blessed? My beloved is.